So in this video, I'm going to answer a question that someone wanted to know. Uh, can keto actually reverse kidney disease? Out of all the things that destroy the kidney, um, insulin and high sugar is at the top of the list. This is why so many diabetics are getting kidney disease. Um, high levels of glucose and insulin create oxidative damage to four tissues. The brain and nerve tissue, I'm considering that as one, the heart and vessels, the eye, and the kidney. The kidney is very susceptible to oxidative damage from high blood sugar and high insulin. Now, there's a very interesting study that I put a link down below. You can check it out. Uh, it was done for eight weeks. It was on mice, but it showed a complete reversal of the albumin creatine ratio, okay, using the ketogenic diet because beta hydroxybutyrate, which is a ketone, uh, not only can provide an alternative fuel, but it has some real interesting benefits to the kidney, including the big one, which is decreasing oxidative stress. So keto basically can counter the damage and destruction from a high carb diet. And in just eight weeks, there was a partial recovery of kidney damage. So I'd be curious to see if they did it longer, what would happen. Ketones by itself go beyond just providing an alternative fuel. They actually have therapeutic benefits as well. There's different levels of damage to the kidney, different stages, okay? Stage one, two, three, four, five, which is end stage renal failure. And in this stage, the, the kidney, which is a filter, just can no longer filter anymore, can't filter the blood. So you're gonna have excessive amounts of uh, certain nutrients and deficiencies of other nutrients. So if you're at this stage, you need to check with your doctor because you can't just uh, supplement uh, too much potassium, for example. But what I wanna talk about is before you get to this stage, okay? Um, I hear this all the time. Oh, I can't take potassium because it's dangerous to the kidney. The true data is that potassium can actually protect the kidney against damage. I'll put some links down below. You can check that out. So it's totally okay to take potassium and we need 4,700 milligrams every single day. Now, if you're doing intermittent fasting, okay, you'll need less. The requirements go down because you're recycling and you're, you're becoming more efficient with your minerals and other nutrients. But potassium is very, very beneficial for the kidney. The other problem that people run into when the kidney becomes damaged is protein in the body. You have a protein deficiency and you actually end up filling up with fluid. You're getting edema. And taking certain oral amino acids can slow down the progression of kidney damage, okay? So check with your doctor on that. I put some links down below for just research that you can give your doctor if you need to. So if you really look at what's happening to the kidney, you have all this glucose, this refined carb, the sugar, the insulin, it's destroying the kidney function. Uh, but those complications from the oxidation occur more when there's not enough nutrients. So it's very, very important to prevent this problem by consuming nutrient-dense foods. It's the nutrients in the food that protect against the side effects and the complications of the oxidation. And you definitely wanna be on a low-carb diet for sure. This is very, very beneficial for the kidney itself. So ultimately the goal is to prevent this problem. If you're already at stage five, work with your doctor to see what you can eat, what you can't eat. But I would try to follow a healthy keto plan and intermittent fasting as closely as possible. But there are certain types of foods that you're gonna to have to avoid and realize that you do not have to avoid potassium if you're in these earlier stages. All right, thanks for watching. So if you wanna get notified with all my content, click the notification bell next to subscribed.